The banking industry includes retail, business, corporate, private, and finally investment banking, which is going to be our focus. Investment banking relates to activities on the financial markets, which in turn consists of capital, commodity, money, derivatives, future and forward, forex, cash, and interbank lending markets. This video aims to cover the major developments that affect the investment banking industry in the last 10 years, which are mainly regulatory changes or political changes. In 2007, MIFID was implemented across the EU. It's one of the cornerstones of EU financial services legislation. Its main objective is to ensure prudence in investment banking services and increase competition and consumer protection. It applies to investment intermediaries that provide services to clients around shares, bonds, units in collective investment schemes and derivatives, and the organized trading of financial instruments. It's prescriptive on which instruments, services, and activities are regulated and how, by spelling out the governance of investment firms to protect the interests of their clients. It also sets a framework for trading infrastructure. For example, it requires firms to have clear procedures to categorize clients as eligible counterparties, professional or retail clients, and have increasing levels of protection for the three groups when assessing the suitability of each investment product. In share trading, MIFID requires operators to publish the price and volume of five best prices at buy and sell side before the trade. Sell side firms have to publish the price, volume, and time of all trades in listed shares shortly after the trade is completed. MIFID harmonizes cross border regime for European businesses. Therefore, MIFID Passport allows firms to extend investment services and activities to other member states. MIFID became increasingly outdated with the use of technology and there are gaps to be filled. Changes are needed to improve the functioning of financial markets in light of the financial crisis to strengthen investor protection. Therefore, the MIFID II package containing MIFID II and MIFIR will become effective in January 2018. It updates the existing MIFID framework and addresses issues in relation to transparency, investor protection, and market infrastructure. For example, it harmonizes a rule for all firms with EU clients, regardless of whether they are incorporated in the EU. The burden of reporting used to be on the sell side, such as brokers and dealers, but MIFID II transferred it largely onto buy side firms. It no longer allows fund managers to place their business with banks or brokerages in exchange for free research reports. Now they have to pay for the research. Funds with limited research budget will struggle as they have to either pass the cost on to investors or absorb it themselves. MIFID II applies to mainly retail clients with a generally high level of protection. It's a directive that needs to be transposed onto the national law of member states. MIFIR works in conjunction with MIFID II to extend the codes of conduct beyond shares to other types of assets, including contract-based assets and structured finance products. It's a regulation instead of a directive, so it's directly applicable to member states. It applies mainly to professional clients and has a lower level of protection.